from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of Red Hat Summit 2020, brought to you by Red Hat. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of Red Hat Summit. Of course, it's happening digitally. We're interviewing Red Hat executives, customers, and partners from th around the globe who can are going to be part of this digital event. And happy to welcome back to the program. One of our CUBE alumni, Joe Fitzgerald, who's the Vice President and General Manager of the Management Business Unit at Red Hat. Last time I caught up with Joe was at Ansible Fest uh, last year. And uh, Joe, so the fourth year in a row uh, you've been on the CUBE here at Red Hat Summit. Thanks so much for joining us again. Thanks for having me back, Stu. I'm happy to be here. All right, so Joe, I, I think it actually makes sense for us to kind of pick up the conversation where we left it off at Ansible Fest last year. So Ansible Fest, it's all about automation. Uh, you're really helping with the digital transformation, what companies are going through. Uh, in today's day and age, automation and uh, being able to be more agile, of course, everybody for the most part is working from home, being able to enable things remote, the adoption of cloud is even more consideration. So why don't we start there? And uh, since we last talked, um, you know, obviously things have changed for everyone some, but uh, give us the latest uh, from your organization. Thanks, Stu. Um, you know, when we met at Ansible Fest in Atlanta last fall, we were talking about strategic use of automation. Um, you know, in today's you know current crisis, if you will, there's a lot of folks who are leaning on automation in a much more uh, immediate and uh, tactical uh, way. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, Ansible automation being used by folks to deploy either you know infrastructure they need to deal with uh, you know uh, capacity and surge demand that they have right now. Uh, we're seeing people use it for things like working from home uh, because they can't get access to gear. Uh, we're seeing for uh, bursting, you know, to public clouds um, because they can't add more physical equipment, perhaps, in the data center. So last year we were excited to talk to you about strategic automation. That's still really important, but right now uh, a lot of folks have more pressing matters in terms of uh, automating to get through the current crisis. Um, coming to you from northern New Jersey, which is, uh, you know, certainly a hot spot. Um, and certainly have a lot of appreciation for the folks on the front lines that are taking care of us and protecting us and things like that. We want to do everything we can uh, as a company, as Red Hat, to enable uh, folks to do whatever they need to do to uh, be able to get through this crisis. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Joe. Uh, very important topics there. Uh, in the keynote uh, for Red Hat Summit, uh, there's discussion uh, of, of your group. And of course, management has always been uh, a critical piece of how we look at overall IT. Uh, when I first became an analyst, uh, the joke was, well, you know, security and management, we can always kind of poke at those pillars as to things we need to do as an industry to make things better. Uh, specifically, we've been talking for years about uh, the, the, the growth of containerization and Kubernetes, of course, Red Hat, strong leadership position with OpenShift. Uh, my understanding, if, if, I, if I heard right from the keynote, it's the advanced cluster management is the, the new piece. Um, can you give us a little bit about uh, you know, the, the team, the technology, uh, how this fits into the overall Red Hat portfolio? Sure, so we're super excited around uh, advanced cluster management. Uh, it turns out that you know, we have a lot of customers that are running OpenShift to deploy their container-based applications. Um, and as they evolve, uh, they inevitably end up with multiple clusters either based on separation of duties or lines of business, uh, perhaps for distributed um, you know, availability zones and things like that with their clusters. So they inevitably back into a multi-cluster scenario. Uh, what we've done is working with IBM, who had developed some very rich technology around advanced management for multi-cluster environments, built from scratch for container environments and Kubernetes. We worked with IBM and we moved that technology over to Red Hat. And we're in the process of doing two things. One is we're announcing tech preview here at Summit of that technology, and we're in the process of open sourcing that technology. Because we're Red Hat and everything we do is open source, we're going to take some of the most advanced container management, uh, cluster management technology in the world uh, that we've gotten from IBM, and we're going to open source that. But what we're excited here is that we're going to provide this Red Hat offering, advanced cluster management, to help people who are struggling uh, with managing multiple clusters. Yeah, Joe, absolutely a super important po point. Anybody that's watched this space for the last few years, uh, simplicity has not been the word that people have used for it. Uh, and over the last year, there's been a lot of announcements from some of the major players in the industry about how do I manage those multiple cluster environments? So Joe, if I think back two years ago, uh, it was, you know, here's the best way to run Kubernetes. And when you talk to a lot of customers, it was, well, 
They were starting with often spinning their own because that was what it was available. And the number one choice that I usually heard from customers was, oh, if I'm a Red Hat customer, I started using OpenShift and I'd start using OpenShift everywhere. Fast forward to where we are today, of course, you have lots of customers running OpenShift, but also in the public clouds, if I'm using Amazon, Google, Microsoft, other platform environments, often there's a native Kubernetes and I need to manage across those environments. So do I understand right, ACM, is that going to help me not only with my OpenShift, but as it moves forward, also manage some of those other uh, Kubernetes environments? And how does Red Hat approach this kind of the same or differently from what I hear from uh, from Microsoft with, with Arc, with uh, VMware, with Tanzu? So ACM, Advanced Cluster Management from Red Hat, supports any standard Kubernetes environment. One of the advantages we have working in an OpenShift environment is OpenShift has a lot of functionality besides Kubernetes. In other words, it's already a layer of sophistication built on top of Kubernetes. So OpenShift itself provides a lot of management automation. Now you add advanced cluster management on top of that, which will be able to import other uh, Kubernetes uh, clusters from other environments. But the ability for it to take advantage of the sophistication that's already in OpenShift and then leverage things like Ansible automation and then some of the management SaaS services, cloud.redhead.com, or connected customer experience and the ability to proactively look at uh, OpenShift clusters and be able to, in some cases, tell people about problems they're having before they even realize they have the problem. That combination of management and automation on top of the already rich OpenShift environment really puts us a couple of you know, rungs up in terms of capabilities uh, beyond a standard Kubernetes vanilla environment. Yeah, Joe, it was one of the reasons I was looking forward to this conversation is one of the things that we've been looking at for the last few years is how is multi-cloud the same or different from what we had done back you know, 10, 15 years ago with multi-vendor? And I think anybody that's been around long enough and you talk about management in a multi-vendor environment and you think about the leading tools from a software standpoint were out there and it gives us a little bit of flashbacks and it's not, not in a good way. So what have we learned as an industry? And uh, you, know, you talked about you know, integration with Ansible, the automation, you know, how do we make sure that we aren't repeating the sins of the past uh, with the, 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 these new generation of management tools? Well, what we've seen is that you know, enterprises are inherently going to be hybrid and multi-cloud, right? Red Hat's been talking about open hybrid cloud for almost eight years, right? Um, so our CEO, Paul Cormier, you know, sort of anticipated this, right, which was pretty insightful eight years ago, because everybody thought then that people were going to move exclusively to public cloud, they wouldn't have any data centers, there wouldn't be any hardware anywhere. Fast forward, now you've got you know, data centers, edge, multiple public clouds with services that are you know, all over uh, those different footprints. Uh, we believe that um, you know, unlike the past when you had heterogeneous systems management, Right, where you had different platforms that you were trying to manage as the lowest common denominator as a common platform. Now, what Red Hat is offering is OpenShift, which will run on you know, all the uh, public clouds, as well as on your physical and virtual hardware in the data centers and at the edge. So basically it provides a consistency, which means that the management can then talk to a consistent environment, and provide a much higher level of hybrid cloud management than trying to either have silos of different management tools by cloud, by vendor, by environment, um, and then try to federate at a lowest common denominator. Like you'll see Kubernetes management tools, for example, um, that have to use the lowest, you know, sort of common denominator, which are the, the straight uh, Kubernetes APIs. We could take advantage of those, but also the additional functionality that OpenShift brings in, for example, with the other capabilities. So it allows us to have a higher level of management, but provide that consistency by having the same hybrid cloud platform, in this case, OpenShift, run across those different environments. Yeah, uh, Joe, one of the things that, that also concerns me a little bit as the industry, when they talk about Kubernetes, it's very much a discussion of the infrastructure piece. But we know this move to cloud native is very much about the application and the application development. So help me understand a little bit how, how that overall story for kind of the app devs, CI, CD, all those pieces fit into your story. Uh, you know, I, I know it was one of the major points of discussion, uh, you know, at Ansible Fest. Yeah, so, so it is really all about the application, right? People really don't want to think about the infrastructure. They want to think about the application. That's really what's driving their business and their differentiation. Um, in the case of OpenShift, 
OpenShift provides application lifecycle management for Kubernetes environments, our advanced cluster management sort of takes that a step further and allows you to extend that lifecycle so that you can deploy applications based on policy to different environments um, based on you know, needs, uh, keeps compliance and security and all those things uh, in force, regardless of how many different places that you're actually deploying the application. So it's not just as easy as taking an application and deploying it to one location. People want to be able to continuously update their applications and deploy it to all of the places that it needs to be, either based on uh, availability, uh, their proximity, security, environments, and things like that. And that presents a hard challenge. Uh, and so that's why some of the tools like advanced cluster management are exactly designed to help with those kind of new application life cycles people are looking for. All right, uh, Joe, uh, you talked about that uh, some of the technology uh, for, for ACM came from the IBM side. Uh, give us the update. When you look at the IBM cloud portfolio, uh, how is, is your group really interacting and supporting and working with uh, the, the overall IBM solutions? So IBM has a very robust portfolio and they have you know, a number of uh, uh, cloud packs in their portfolio that address you know, things like applications and data and management, things like that. Um, so IBM uh, in, in this case had developed some advanced cluster management technology, but it was not uh, open sourced and it wasn't available to other folks. One of the challenges with that is that uh, we believe as Red Hat that the innovation is happening at open source. If you develop something in a closed proprietary way, it may be the best thing in the world today, a year, two years, three years from now, there are other projects and there are other uh, technologies that are being collaborated on and open that are going to basically leave you behind, right? So we think open is the future. So in this case, in working with IBM, we took some very advanced technology, we moved it over to Red Hat, and now we're in the process of open sourcing it, as well as providing an enterprise consumable version of that technology in Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes. Um, IBM, again, uh, has to support a much broader, diverse environment, right, um, in terms of everything from you know, mainframes to edge and containers and VMs and physical machines, applications that span decades. So they have a much bigger sort of, uh, you know, target environment uh, that they have to work in. Red Hat's focused on the future. We're really sort of skating to where the puck is, if you will, to use a, you know, a, a hockey analogy, where basically, you know, we're trying to anticipate what enterprises are going to need and address that with not only the platforms, but the management and automation, they're going to need to be successful with those platforms. Yeah, uh, Joe, I want, want you to bring us into your customers and you talk about all these changes that are happening uh, in, in the landscape and how they manage it. Uh, any insight you can give as to, you know, organizational structures? Uh, you know, I remember last year at Summit, I, I talked to a number of companies going through digital transformation and, you know, we know that there is as much, if not more, organizational change that needs to happen along with the technology pieces. So uh, from your world, you know, who's kind of leading the charge? What skill sets do people need to either, you know, bring to it or learn new? Uh, and, you know, how are companies, you know, taking advantage of this? Well, as they say, developers are sort of the new kingmaker, right, in some ways. Um, and so, you know, the tools that, you know, they've always said people, process, and technology, right? And I know as software companies get very, very excited about the technology, but it turns out that the, the people in the process here, the way people are building their applications, the way, uh, you know, DevOps and CI, CD, um, it's a very, very sort of different environment for management automation tools. Um, you know, and sort of the relationship between teams has changed and will change more, by the way. Um, and so one of the things we're trying to do, you see this with Ansible, but you're also seeing this with advanced cluster management, is the ability to delegate and give different kinds of operational and management capabilities to the teams, whether it's like business, developers, QE teams. Um, so it's fundamentally changing the way that uh, the processes are working. That requires that the tools map to those new team structures and those no per new processes. Um, and that's one of the things that's going on. It's fundamentally different. And one of the things I think you're going to see is management tools that were built in the past for the sort of the old style of organizing uh, are not going to fare well uh, in the new world where these processes and the, and the team structures are changing. All right. Uh, so, Joe, uh, before uh, I, I want to get some feedback from you on how your technologies and teams are helping with, with the COVID 19 uh, piece, but uh, let, let's just wrap up the ACM discussion. Uh, before we do that. So uh, you said it's a tech preview. 
Uh, so uh, one of the things that's really nice is when you move things to open source, uh, the community gets pretty good visibility as to when things are getting releases, uh, new features down the pike. So what should we be looking for as an industry for ACM when that rolls out? How do people start getting their hands on it? And uh, you know, what does that roadmap look like? So there's really two paths here. One is from a tech preview point of view, uh, you know, customers can get access to the technology, right? And, and see it in their environment and give us feedback. Um, the fact that it's been developed for the past two years and probably constitutes hundreds of years of developer um, you know, time in it, um, it's not an alpha technology, it's pretty robust. Uh, so even though we're calling it tech preview, we anticipate that it's going to be production ready in short fashion. It will take us a little bit of time to open source um, the technologies. Um, Reddit has a history of open sourcing technologies that we acquire. Uh, each one varies in terms of what's in the code, licenses, how it's structured, um, how it should be open sourced. We just don't back the truck up and take a bunch of code and put it in a repository. There's actually a thoughtful process about the way that the projects are set up, and which communities they should be in. Um, so we're going through that process now, but customers will be able to take advantage of it in short fashion. And I think they're going to find a very high level of maturity uh, given how long and how much IBM has worked on this. You know, Joe, really important pieces there. Uh, the other one, I'll close the discussion uh, with how we started off. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, workers and companies are having to, you know, make changes and be more flexible than ever uh, in response to the, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, what are some of the pieces of, you know, technologies and services uh, that, that you want to highlight as to that, that are helping companies uh, really adjust to what is happening in today's world? Well, Red Hat has um, is, is always been a very conscientious company. And in my particular area, one of the things we're doing is with Ansible, we're trying to enable folks to use automation, um, providing you know, free, workshop, free workshops and access to code uh, and playbooks and things for different environments. If you think about the different kinds of industries right now, some are struggling with you know, uh, smaller workforces, work at home, other ones are under tremendous pressure to deliver services to help keep us safe and protect us. Um, so we are trying to provide as much uh, as we can in terms of automation, um, enabling you know, people to use you know, free open source innovation uh, and automation to enable work from home, uh, to do everything from create VPNs to um, you know, set their statuses and communicate between teams in this new environment, uh, to burst into uh, public clouds in some cases because some are trying to scale because their, their business has now changed, but it's under tremendous pressure. Uh, you see that in delivery services and things like that. Um, so we're trying to help as much as we can. We think automation is something that can be immediately helpful and has been. Some of these other projects, you know, if somebody's doing a transformation and they're you know, designing new applications, that has a much longer uh, burn to it. Whereas automation is needed today by companies under duress, it can help them accelerate um, and it can actually uh, help their, uh, their new work at home environments. Uh, so we see automation helping a lot. The other thing I want to mention is that we have free capabilities like Red Hat Insights that can actually assess systems for security. The last thing you need is a security breach or some other problem while you're dealing with uh, fighting fires. There are bad actors out there. Uh, we've seen you know, a few already. Um, so Insights' ability to look at systems and tell people what their uh, you know, current you know, posture is so they can you know, remediate them quickly, whether with our tools or some other tool they have, uh, we're trying to do as much as we can to help our customers um, through this really tough time. All right, well, Joe, thank you so much for the updates. Uh, congratulations to the team on the progress and absolutely very important topics uh, to help customers that need to react even faster than ever uh, in today's time. All right. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate I'm, it. I'm Stu Miniman. Uh, lots more coverage from Red Hat Summit on theCUBE. Check out thecube.net and thank you for watching. Thank you.